Hagia Sophia, one of the most astonishing historical buildings in the world. It was built as an Orthodox church turned into a mosque, a museum, and a mosque again. It is located in Istanbul, the city that was the capital of the Byzantine Empire, the Ottoman Empire, and finally the biggest city of Turkey. Hagia Sophia means holy wisdom in ancient Greek. It is also called as Hagia Sophia in Turkish. The current Hagia Sophia is not the first one built in that place. The first church was built on the site was called as the Magna Iglesia, the Great Church. This name was given to it because of its huge size compared to the other churches in the city at that time. It was built next to the Great Palace of Constantinople, which doesn't exist now. Its location is so close to Topkapi Palace, which was used by the Ottoman Sultans for many years. According to the 5th century historian Socrates of Constantinople, the Great Church was built by the Great Constantine and his son, Constantine II, made it bigger and more beautiful. Greek historian and biographer Hesychius of Miletus mentions that Constantine built Hagia Sophia with wooden roof and removed 427 statues from its site. The statues that had been moved from the area were pagan statues. The name of the Great Church implies that it was bigger than other Constantinopolitan churches. Before it was completed, Hagia Irene, another church in that site, by the way, Hagia Irene means Holy Peace, served as cathedral. The Great Church had a timber roof, curtains, columns, and an entrance that faced west. It had a shape like a Roman circus and probably had an narthex. Towards the end of the 4th century, the Patriarch of Constantinople, Ioannis Chrysos and the Empress Aelia Eudoxia had a conflict. The church was burnt down during the riots following this conflict. Second church in the area was ordered by Theodosius II. When it was built, it was called as Magna Iglesia, the Great Church again. Former cathedral, Hagia Irene, was called as Iglesia Antigua, the Old Church. The basilica was built by architect Rufinus. The church's main entrance may have had gilded doors, faced west, and there was another entrance to the east. There was a central pulpit and probably an upper gallery. The exterior was decorated with elaborate carvings of the rich Theodosian era designs. It had colorful floor mosaics and external decorative sculpture. It can be understood from the surviving stone fragments that there was vaulting at the western end. It had a monumental propyleum hall with a portico. The propyleum opened onto an atrium, which lay in front of the Basilica Church. Following the propyleum was a steep monumental staircase, following the contours of the ground. This arrangement probably looked like Old St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Close to the stairs, there was a cistern, probably to supply a fountain in the atrium or for the worshippers to wash with before entering. Its fate was similar to the first Hagia Sophia. It was burnt to the ground during famous Nika revolt in 532. On 23 February 532, just a couple of weeks after the destruction of the second basilica, the Emperor Justinian I appointed Anthemius of Trias and Isidore of Miletus to design the building. Originally, the exterior of the church was covered with marble veneer, white marble cladding, Gilding of some parts would have made Hagia Sophia a lot more different than other buildings and increased its visibility from distance. The interior surfaces were sheeted with polychrome marbles, green and white with purple porphyry and gold mosaics. Columns and other marble elements were imported from throughout the Mediterranean. It is faster to bring regular made columns from other places than building new ones. So they probably thought if we already have these columns and can build the church faster with them, why bother to make new ones? And because these columns were originally used for some other buildings, they vary in size. It was claimed that more than 10,000 people worked to build the church. The construction ended within just five years. When the emperor saw the finished building, he said, Solomon, I have surpassed you. Hagia Sophia was the seat of the Patriarchate of Constantinople and a principal setting for Byzantine imperial ceremonies, such as coronations. Earthquakes in August 553 and December 557 caused cracks in the main dome and eastern semi-dome. In 558, the eastern dome collapsed and destroyed Amben, Alta, and Ciborium due to an earthquake. 
the collapse was mainly because of the excessive bearing load and huge shear load of the dome. This caused the deformation of the piers which sustained the dome. The Emperor ordered a restoration, they changed the dome type. With the Emperor Justinian's orders, eight Corinthian columns were brought from Lebanon to Constantinople. The construction was completed in 562. During the 7th century, some of the valuable assets of the church were melted down to make gold and silver coins by the order of the Emperor Heraclius due to bad economy. In 726, the Emperor Leia ordered the army to destroy all icons in the period of Byzantine iconoclasm. At that time, all religious pictures and statues were removed from Hagia Sophia. During the reign of Empress Irene, the iconoclasts returned. Early in the 10th century, the pagan ruler of the Kievan Rus sent emissaries to his neighbors to learn about Judaism, Islam, Roman and Orthodox Christianity. After visiting Hagia Sophia, his emissaries reported back, we were led into a place where they served their god, and we did not know where we were, in heaven or on earth. During 9th and 10th centuries, the building was damaged by earthquakes and fires. After the reconstruction of the building in 10th century, which lasted 6 years, the church's decorations were renovated. Four immense paintings of giant six-winged seraphs, a new depiction of Christ on the dome, and a new depiction of Virgin Mary holding Jesus were added. Hagia Sophia faced a massive theft during the Fourth Crusaders in 1204. It was stripped of all its metal ornaments, its altar was smashed into pieces. Mules and donkeys were brought into the cathedral's sanctuary to carry away the gilded silver plating of the bema, the ambo, and the doors and other furnishings. Prior to this event, in 1203, all gold ornaments and silver oil lamps were given to Crusaders as they had ousted Alexius III and helped Isaac return to the throne. Much of the interior of Hagia Sophia was damaged and would not be repaired until its return to Orthodox control in 1261. During the Latin occupation of Constantinople, the church became a Latin Catholic cathedral. Baldwin I was crowned as the Emperor of Latin Constantinople in Hagia Sophia. Also, Enrico Dandolo of Venice, who ordered the sack and invasion of the city by Latin Crusaders in 1204, was buried in Hagia Sophia. Its tomb is located on the upper floor. When the Michael VIII recaptured the city in 1261, the church was not in a good shape. So new buttresses were built in the 13th century. The building developed cracks in the dome after the earthquake in 1344 and several parts of it collapsed. After the Turks conquered Constantinople in 1453, Mehmed II, the Ottoman Sultan of that time, performed Friday prayer in the church. This marked the official conversation of the church into a mosque. It was reported by a Cordoba nobleman, Perro Tefo, and the Florentine geographer Cristoforo Budelmonti that before the conquest of Constantinople by the Turks, the church was falling apart. Mehmed II ordered a renovation immediately. It became the first imperial mosque of Istanbul. Before 1481, a small minaret was constructed on the southwest corner of the building. Mehmed's successor, Bayezid II, later built another minaret at the northeast corner. One of the minarets were collapsed after the earthquake in 1509. Around the middle of the 16th century, they were both replaced by two diagonally opposite minarets. The floor of the building was covered with a carpet and had not been seen until 19th century. During the 16th century, Suleiman the Magnificent brought two candlesticks from Hungary and placed them in Hagia Sophia. During his reign, the mosaics above the narthex and imperial gates were covered by whitewash and plaster. The dome was decorated in Islamic style. The mosaics were reopened in 1930 by the Turkish Republic. In the 16th century, famous architect Sinan added structural supports to the building, making it last longer. He also added two new minarets. Towards the end of this century, the architect Dawood Aga built Tome of Murad III. Later during the 17th century, the baptistery was turned into a tomb for sultans and their family members. In the 18th century, the plaster of the interior was renovated, preserving mosaics. Sultan Mahmud I ordered the construction of a medrese, a school, 
a library, a fountain, and an emirat, a soup kitchen for distribution to the poor. At the same time, a new sultan's lodge and a new mihrab were built inside. In the 19th century, restoration of Hagia Sophia was ordered by Sultan Abdul Majid. 800 workers worked under the supervision of the Swiss-Italian architect brothers Gaspare and Giuseppe Fossati. Eight huge circular frame discs were added at this time. These discs were the names of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad, the first four caliphs and the two grandsons of Muhammad. A new entrance was built for the Sultan. The minarets were repaired and altered so they were of equal height. A clock building and a new madrasa were also built at that time. In 1935, the first Turkish president and a founder of the Republic of Turkey, Asatürk, transformed the building into a museum. During the World War II, the minarets of the building housed MG-80s. The carpet was removed and Omphalion appeared again. The white plastic covering many of the mosaics had been removed. In 2014, Hagia Sophia was the second most visited museum in Turkey, attracting almost 3.3 million visitors annually. The museum was converted to a mosque in 2020. Now it serves as a mosque and entrance is free. It's open for visitors every day but visitors are asked to leave during prayer times. As we covered the history of this amazing place, let's take a look at the architecture and mosaics. The building has brick and mortar joints that are 1.5 times thicker than bricks. The vast interior is covered by a central dome. The central dome has not a circular shape, but an elliptical shape. The highest point of the dome is at 55.6 meters from floor level. There are two half domes on its west and east sides. We also see this type of structure in Ottoman buildings later on. The floor of the building dates back to the 6th century. It is mostly made of marble. Most of the marble used to make this floor, and also other monuments in Constantinople, was obtained from the Marmara region of modern-day Turkey. Today, the floor is covered by a carpet, but one part of the floor is left open. The Omphalion. This is the place where Byzantine emperors were crowned. The imperial gate or the imperial door was the main entrance and it was used by the emperors of the Byzantine Empire. The gate is between Exo and Esonarthex. At the top of the gate, there is a mosaic which was probably added during the 10th century. The emperor with halo in this mosaic is believed to represent Emperor Leo VI or his son Constantine VII. The emperor is bowing down before Christ Pantocrator, seated on a jeweled throne giving his blessings and holding his left hand an open book. The text on the book reads, Peace be with you, and I am the light of the world. On each side of Christ's shoulders is a circular medallion with busts. On his left, the archangel, Gabriel holding a staff, and on his right, there is Mary. There is a long ramp there in the outer narthex that leads to the upper gallery. The ramp is narrow and the floor of it is covered by rocks. Wearing high heels is not a good idea here if you ever plan to do it, but unfortunately, you can't even use this ramp with your comfortable shoes as the upper floor is not open for tourists. The upper floor has a horseshoe shape and it is interrupted by the arms. The upper floor along with the lower one hosts more amazing mosaics, impressive elements and decorations. Among these decorations, we may easily notice the four giant seraphs on each side of pendentives. During the Ottoman era, their faces were covered with golden stars. Now we can see at least one of their faces open. The loggia of the Empress is located in the center of the gallery. It is on the second floor. A green stone disc marks the spot where the throne of the Empress stood. The columns are made of green Thessalian stone. On the second floor, we also see the marble door. As you may guess, the door is made of marble. Each side of the marble door is symbolic. One represents heaven while the other one represents hell. Its panels are covered in fruits and fish motifs. The door opens into a space that was used as a venue for solemn meetings and important resolutions of patriarchate officials. At the northwest of the building, there is a column with a hole in the middle covered by bronze plates. The column is called a sweating column. It is also called as the crying column or the wishing column. 
Legend says that the column has been moist since the appearance of Grigory the Wonder Worker near the column in 1200. It is believed that the moisture cures many illnesses. In the southern part of Hagia Sophia, there is a Viking inscription. Some believe that the inscription reads, Halfdan was here, and it was carved by a Viking mercenary served in the Eastern Roman Empire in the 9th century. The mosaic in the semidome above the apse at the east end shows Mary holding the Christ child and seated on a jeweled throne. It is not known when the mosaic was installed, but it is believed that it was after the end of Byzantine iconoclasm around the 9th century. The portraits of the archangels Gabriel and Michael in the Bema also date from the 9th century. The mosaics are set against the original golden background of the 6th century. The Emperor Alexander mosaic is located on the second floor in a dark corner of the ceiling. It depicts the Emperor Alexander in full regalia, holding a scroll in his right hand and a globus crucica in his left. The Emperor Alexander lived at the end of the 9th century. It is believed that he was one of the worst emperors of the Byzantine Empire. He died of a stroke during a polar game. Empress Sia Mosaic is on the eastern wall of the southeastern gallery. It dates back to the 11th century. Empress Zia was the daughter of Constantine VIII, who wanted her to marry Argyrus before he died. When she married to Argyrus, Zoya was 50 and still a virgin. After their marriage, Zoya fell in love with a young stable boy, Michael. They killed Argus by drowning him in the bath, and Michael became the emperor. When Michael IV died, his nephew Michael V became the emperor and imprisoned Zoe. This led to a riot, and Constantine IX became the next emperor. With each husband Zoe had, the mosaic changed. Actually, the faces of Jesus and Zoe are also not original. Michael V destroyed the face of Zoe, he might be the one who destroyed Jesus' face too. The face he belongs to Zoe's third husband, Constantine XI. Zoe holds an inscription showing the donations made to the church. Komnenis mosaic is situated at the south end point. It dates back to the 13th century. This is similar to Zoe panel which also depicts the imperial offering to Mary and Christ. Empress Irene with her blonde hair holds a scroll of parchment of donation made to the great church. She is dressed in a royal red garment with embellished jewelry and gold. She has a gold crown and pear-shaped earrings. Janus Komnenos II presents a money purse to Mary and Christ. On the right of Empress and Emperor, there is a panel allocated to their son, Alexios. He is about 17 years old in this depiction. He died of tuberculosis at an early age. By looking at their different styles, we can say that this panel dates back to a later time. This is mosaic dates back to the 13th century. It is located in the upper south gallery. In the mosaic, Virgin, St. John, the Baptist, and the Christ are begging for the salutation of men. We tried to cover some of the most notable figures in this amazing building. There are much more to be discovered. I recommend you to visit and see it with your own eyes. Thanks for watching.